Good afternoon. It is the 7th of March 2021. This is Dr. Deepak Natarajan, Senior Consultant, Interventional Cardiologist, Head of Department of Cardiology, the Supreme Hospital. I am uh, quite bemused by an article which was published yesterday in the New York Times calling a variant which has been spotted in the state of Oregon as deadly. The New York Times article uh, takes resource to a preprint which uh, is from Denmark. The preprint merely suggests that the British variant, the English variant, is uh, more infective to the tune of uh, 60%. It nowhere mentions that this increased infectivity is connected with more deaths. However, the New York Times, maybe because it has been covering uh, the uh, goings on in Syria, Yemen, Latin America for so many years, has, has a, a great liking for deaths and the word deadly. The, the reality is that so far the English variant has not been found to be more deadly. The, there was a preprint from NERVTAG. NERVTAG is the new emerging respiratory virus uh, group which advises the government of England which had brought out a preprint way back in December on the 22nd of December. They revised this on the 11th of January but even today it is still a preprint and it has uh, not been published. And in this preprint, they have uh, suggested that there is an increased mortality by 35% with the English variant. However, there was no increased in deaths below the age of 55 years. And even that 35% increase in deaths above the age of 55 years is quite dubious because the sample collected was merely 10%. In fact, 8% of all the deaths during that time in England. So therefore, that is not a preprint to rave about. Now, coming back to this, uh, this uh, article in the New York Times, we have a lot of experts in the West who keep on uh, demonizing uh, this virus and the variants. Yes, there is a COVID-19 variant. There is a COVID-19 virus. Where it emerged from, we still do not know. We still are not clear whether it has come from bats or whether it was... Uh, engineered in a laboratory somewhere in China, maybe with the aid of American money. Now, that is a dubious point. The WHO had sent a committee. They have given a report in which they have emphatically said that this has not come from a lab, but this interim report has been, for the time being, rejected by the WHO itself. So, we have these experts from the West, and we have a similar situation. We've had it in the cricket series, which has uh, just ended. We had these so-called uh, former experts, and rather not so-called uh, former experts, but current experts, but so-called uh, former players from England. I won't name them, who kept on talking about the pitch in Chepok, about the pitch in Matera, and saying that it was a bad pitch. And uh, that is the reason why the English could not play. The reality is, as you and I know, the English team is uh, quite bad. It is quite uh, second rate. And even an Indian B team could possibly beat them in, in India. And now, of course, the English will start talking about getting the Indians into their backyard. And this was the mistake made by the Aussie captain when he mocked Ravishnath Nashwan that, let's see you in Gaba. We know what happened in Gaba. Because we know that if, if, if Pujara fails, we have Virat Kohli. If Virat Kohli fails, we have Jinx Rahane. If Rahane fails, we have uh, Spider-Man uh, Rishabh Pant. And if Rishabh Pant fails, we have another little boy, another young chap called Washington Sundar, who is quite little in size, but is, is one, one hell of a batsman. Probably the best uh, number eight test batsman in the world today. Now, I am talking about cricket because there is an analogy here. There is, there is a similarity to the COVID-19 virus and the variants. Now, there is also a small surge across the country. We have had about 19,000 new cases yesterday with the 100 deaths. The deaths in Delhi are very few. I mean, I think yesterday there was only one death. There, of course, are 300 cases. But this is not because of these variants, not because of these rogue variants as the mainstream media is calling them in India. These may not be because of any variant. They are most probably because of human behavior in India. Because Indians right now or for the last so many months have been behaving as if there was never any COVID-19 virus. 
there is no question of distancing in fact people are sitting on uh, on one another on their own in you know sitting just barely a millimeter from one another there is uh, no mask being worn if a mask is worn it is worn in a most uh, terrible manner apart from this i doubt if indians are washing their hands so therefore there is bound to be a surge but with this surge we will also be inching towards herd immunity because we are also we have also begun vaccinating people and the vaccination uh, program is is gathering momentum more and more people will be vaccinated so now coming back to the question of variants the important thing is you know they have been talking about these variants which have been found in england south africa brazil in california and now in oregon you must understand that when a virus any virus enters the human cell the job of the virus is to multiply it is to replicate and in the process of replicating in the post in the process of multiplying it can make small errors and these small errors are what are called mutations they usually do not cause any alteration in the behavior of the virus at the most we can call them variants because the genome of the variant is slightly different from the original virus now the virus has about 30000 letters or 30000 numbers uh, in its genome and when the virus multiplies or when it or replicates then there can be a small change in one or two or three of these letters these could either be deleted they could be removed or there could be an addition or there could be a replacement in these amino acids or in these bases when more than 10 or 12 of these occur then that could be called a variant of concern which is what these new variants are but the good news is that the vaccines do work against them we have we have test tube data we have experimental data and we also have real life data now as far as the test tube data is concerned we have preprints we have information that uh, the uh, antibodies produced by the messenger rna vaccines do work against uh, these variants especially the the most uh, elusive the most dodgy variant which is the south african variant so the moderna and the pfizer vaccines the antibodies produced by them do work against the south african variant as also the brazilian variant maybe to a smaller extent but they do work the other important thing is that the johnson and johnson vaccine which is a single shot uh, adeno vector vaccine has shown a remarkable efficacy against the south african variant not in the laboratory but actually on the ground and that efficacy was as high as 64% so my message to you is there is of course we are not to be scared of this virus but at the same time we can not afford to lower our guard that is very important the precautions have to be maintained whether the virus is here or it is not whether the vaccine is here or whether the vaccine is not here the important thing is that mortality in indians is very low it is still about 113 per million which is much less than the mortality seen in the west which is as high as 1600 per million as seen in the united states in the united kingdom italy france and spain the uh, other important thing is why i have made this video today is because as against this article in the new york times which has a link with this single pre preprint i have also come across uh, a brilliant preprint from california which is uh, which was posted just a few days back in fact on the 1st of march this preprint the researchers have actually tested not antibodies but the t cells now i have spoken in my previous segments that immunity in human beings consists of many aspects it is just not only antibodies we also have what is called t cells now t cells are produced or rather activated in the thymus and t cells are fundamentally of two kinds the helper t cells and the killer t cells the helper t cells again are subdivided into two forms the helper cells one type and the t helper cells two and the important thing is that when the human body triggers a response or when it activates a response both helper cells should be produced at at the same level that is very important if the th2 cell response is greater then there would be a problem 
Now here, incidentally, I must mention that the response seen of T cells against uh, the, uh, the, the Indian inactivated vaccine is very good. The Indian Covaxin vaccine has a molecule in it which is called uh, quinoline. The quinoline molecule ensures that there is a balanced T cell response once a person is vaccinated. Now coming back to this uh, preprint from uh, California, what these researchers have shown is that there are T cells produced whether a person is uh, infected nationally by COVID-19 or whether people have been infected rather, sorry, have been vaccinated by the messenger RNA vaccines, that is, if they have been vaccinated by the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. What the researchers are showing is that T cells are produced and most importantly, most crucially, these T cells were capable of attacking the variants. Not only were they active completely against the original virus, these uh, T cells were active also against the South African variant, against the Brazilian variant, and of course against the British variant. We already know that the AstraZeneca vaccine was uh, not very effective in South Africa. The efficacy against the South African variant plummeted to just about 10 to 20 percent, but that study was rather small. It included only 2,000 people, but the fact is that on the ground, the AstraZeneca vaccine was not very effective against the South African variant. But as opposed to that, we now have data which is suggesting that uh, along with natural infection, we will have T-cells if we have a messenger RNA vaccine in us, and these T-cells would ensure that they neutralize the variants, the variants, the current variants, and also future variants. The reason is that if a variant is, is formed, a future variant, which definitely will come into being, definitely there will be new variants, and if a new variant comes across, we come across a new variant, then these variants, apart from the spike protein, have other epitopes. These are points against which T cells become active. Now these points, these epitopes do not, do not change. So we do have a situation where these variants have a change or an alteration in the spike protein. This is actually in the receptor binding domain portion of the spike. The RBD or the easy way of remembering it is as the uh, Rai Bareilly Delhi area. Now that is the part of the spike which actually attaches the spike to your cell and in that uh, part, in that receptor binding domain, we have another point, a very sp specific point, which is called the N-terminal uh, domain. Now the N-terminal domain is the actual point. Now these variants have changes in these two areas, in the RBD and the N-terminal domain. The N-terminal domain you can remember as Natrajan Deepak. So we have, we have Riberelli Delhi and Natrajan Deepak, we have these two parts of the spike protein which are altered either by a transformation. And the third area which can change or which has actually changed is the furin cleavage point. Now I won't go into the details, it is uh, enough for you to understand that mutations are occurring in the spike portion of, of the virus but despite the fact that these mutations can make the virus more dodgy can make the virus capable of evading immunity. The, the, the problem for the virus is that it has many epitopes. It has many other points which can be a target for our T cells. So the happy news is that there may be a lot of scaremongering by respectable newspapers. You can, you know, I, I can name them. It could be the New York Times. It could be the Washington Post. It could be the London Times. It could be the Guardian. It could be the Le Mans because we have to make sure as to who is funding these newspapers. But the fact is that now we have a preprint which is clearly suggesting that we have T cells which actually act and neutralize against these, uh, neutralize these new mutants. Now with this, I will uh, stop this video. I hope you have liked this video. And I please, I, I, I do request you that you press the like button, you press the subscribe button, that you share this with other people also. And uh, what else can I say? I mean, right now, the, the happy news is that 
for the first time we have the strongest test cricket team in the world and I am quite positive, I am quite not hopeful, I am very optimistic that we would be able to beat the Kiwis in uh, June at Lord's. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me.